thought we were going to get some sailing and Chris decided to stop working around the 20 little projects and rip into all of them at once, forcing us to finally finish the interior of our boat. In true Chris Neely fashion, he didn't take very much before footage. He just kind of ripped everything apart, not thinking to share it with our viewers. So that is why I am stepping in and giving y'all a little recap of what he's been up to. Welcome to another episode of How to Destroy Your Sailboat. I'm your host, Marissa. Welcome aboard our once beautiful 1979 Choi Lee 41 Avocet, now looking like a prime lab for Dexter to uh, experiment with his murders. As you can see, we have this beautiful plastic set up on the walls to protect our bedroom and the belongings that still remain. And as we progress this way, you can see our galley where I once cooked many delicious meals, now in disrepair, with these countertops halfway destroyed, our fridge full of nothing but fiberglass dust and um, cool. tools. Ooh, there we go. There's a little bit of glass. Not a whole lot of foam is what I'm trying, is what I'm figuring out right now. So the foam was sitting like this, so there was already that much um, of, a, of a gap, which isn't good. There's only maybe an inch and a half of foam that was just floating around in here. Okay. And on the back side over here, in between the liner and the actual wall of this, there is no foam at all. Reinsulating our fridge has been a project on our to-do list since the very beginning. When we first noticed that our fridge compressor was constantly running and fresh produce wasn't lasting as long as it should. So we kicked off our gala refit by getting rid of the old to make room for the new. To finish this project, we needed XPS foam and large 4x8 foot sheets in addition to some other materials that were unavailable in California. We are here at our first stop in Nevada and that is Sherwin-Williams Paints. We're here to get our tile clad paint, which we are going to use in all of our lockers. It is a two-part epoxy paint, which is outlawed in California since it is not water-based. Um, we are really excited to stock up on all this and then head on to our next destination. We took a little detour to Red Rock Canyon. Unfortunately, everything is by reservation right now, but we were still able to find this little overlook where you can see the Red Rocks behind us and this beautiful canyon to my right. R5 rated uh, XPS foam. This is what we're gonna need to reinsulate our fridge. So awesome to get all this. Very much so cheaper here in Nevada versus California. Last time you saw us ripping into this fridge, we were just kind of getting into the bones of it, figuring out how badly insulated this was. Uh, it turned out being that there was no insulation on the front, there was no insulation on the back there was insulation on the bottom and on the top. So it was really no wonder our fridge never worked very well and now we are fixing it. So now we're trying to figure out how to get the XPS foam that are in one inch rigid panels into this non-uniform area. And the first layer I think is gonna be the most difficult because if you look in kind of like this pan down here, uh, it has a lot of variances from where the toe kick is and where the actual bottom of the uh, original fridge was so anyways, getting the first one in is gonna be the most difficult. After that, everything should be a lot more uniform and then kind of be able to slot into place a lot faster. The quickest and most efficient way we have found to create templates is to hot glue mixing sticks together to make sure the shape is correct. This method has been tried and true and worked great when cutting the new foam. Why did you 
cut out the floor, though. We cut out the floor for a couple of reasons. I didn't know exactly how these bulkheads were attaching to the hole, and my I didn't think that they were tabbed in correctly, and they actually are not. And that's just one thing that would be nice to fix. The other thing is that we were putting insulation on top of stuff like this, and it, you're never going to get that great of a bond. Uh, another reason is that when you go to the hole, you're obviously getting more room, so there's a lot of reasons to do it. The reason not to do it, I don't know why, but, um... That floor is really deep. Yeah, it goes down really deep. It's almost thinking, like, we insulate that, insulate that, and make this thing into, like, a really deep thing where, like, a, we could, like, put the, pull up a grate, maybe? I don't know. Should we cut more? Stop cutting. Well, it, has John just turned into your boat conscience? Yeah. Your, your, your live boat conscience? John is definitely the boat conscience. That's scary. It is. <laughs>
right, well, we are about to put in the liner pieces. These are uh, FRP uh, board that you can pick up pretty much at any hardware store. People use these for bathrooms all the time. They line drywall with it because it's really, really durable and it doesn't let any water in. It's not good. It's not good enough for you know anything structural, but as a as a protective liner, it's perfect. Chris is gooping it all up. We're putting it in with epoxy, thick in the epoxy. Once we do the fillet, you can just pull the tape and it doesn't get all over because we want to basically use this nice white surface that we have. We don't want to have to paint again. With a few finishing touches and some glorious, glorious sanding, we were finally seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. At last, it was time to install our highly anticipated quartz countertops and new Kumaru fiddles, as well as some other new galley accessories. One of the new things we integrated into our new fridge is this little temperature sensor. It sends a Bluetooth signal right here to my phone so I can monitor the temperature, the humidity, just like I can monitor a battery management system. So this means I can check at a glance to make sure that everything's working properly. When we first installed our beautiful quartz countertops, we had a lot of people reach out to us regarding the weight. However, Avocet can accommodate the weight change beautifully and we've noticed no issues in her salient. We're really happy about that. We chose to go with this stone for a few reasons. It's scratch resistant, semi-heat resistant, and it is acid resistant. Right, Chris? It's impervious to acids. It's impervious to acids. Great stone for baking as well, and I love baking, so that's definitely something I wanted to incorporate into our home. Just to take it a step farther and see what damage we can actually get away with on this countertop, we have a little test slab here that I'm gonna do some cooking on and report back later. So this is what it looks like now, and we'll see what it looks like when I'm done, so. I feel like the cut on the piece of cork. I don't really like it. It's, I can, I definitely know that our knife blade is gonna need to be sharpened after this. It's definitely um, a sacrifice for this experiment, but it doesn't dig in the way that, I mean, you can hear it, it's just bouncing back off. It doesn't dig in the way a wooden cutting board does. Let's clean it up and see if we made any cuts in the finish. Um, like we said, it said that it was scratch proof, so let's see if it is. Round one complete. It is definitely scratch resistant. All right, so just so you guys can see, this pot is very hot, it's still on. I'm turning it off now. I'm going to take my Dutch oven and move it to the slab. So we've left this pot on here until it cooled down. So now I'm gonna move it and see what lies underneath. It's hot. 
but there's no discoloration. Some condensation built up, but I'm not seeing any discoloration. Heat tolerant, I think that's a win, right? It's cool. It, they said it wasn't heat resistant, it's heat tolerant. So the idea is, is if we're in a seaway and we need, for some reason, if I'm in the galley cooking and I need to ditch something really quick, I wouldn't be scrambling around for a safe place to put a hot pot. I could just ditch it somewhere and then recuperate and move it somewhere appropriate. So that's great. Um, that's exactly what we wanted. Really happy about that. So heat resistant, that's two for two. Now for the final test. No dinner is complete without a good wine. So we're gonna test this and see if it stains or not. They say it's not supposed to, so let's try this out. Ah. All right, and just to further the experiment, because this is for an experiment, you know, we gotta be, we gotta test everything. I'm gonna squeeze some lemon on there because lemon citrus in general is very acidic, so. All right, so my little masterpiece has been sitting here for a few minutes. We're gonna wipe it off and see if it's stained. <laughs> no, look at that. Let's get a rag. I'm not seeing any stains, scratches, or heat discoloration. So that's three for three. We're looking real good. I am so happy with how this galley refit turned out. It's actually my number one favorite project we've ever done on Abisset. Coming in second would be our head because it was another very big transformative project. I'm really proud of all of the effort and ideas we incorporated into this space. I mean, from things just like the fiddles becoming extra handholds so we have a way to get around when we're below deck in a seaway and this compression post and a functional faucet. It's things like that that make me so happy to call Avis at home. She keeps showing me more and more every day that she is capable and we are capable and we're gonna take her places, so. I'm getting really hungry and Chris wants me to wrap up this outro, so I'm gonna make some food and um, roll the B-roll.